thank you for the invitation. As uh, my first time here, I would like to start by the basics. Uh, TE gives us uh, moving images. So uh, to assess something in TE, first we must know um, how it looks alike and how it moves. LV has uh, a, is a conical muscular structure with a cavity inside, and that cavity has an ellipsoid form in longitudinal section and circumferential form in transversal section. And there's also a twist movement responsible for LV ejection of the blood that corresponds to a clockwise uh, basal rotation with a counterclockwise apical rotation. When we talk about TE for uh, LV assessment, mostly it's equal or superior than the transthoracic approach. Sometimes it's better for pros po posterior X structures, but some pitfalls may occur uh, when we have acoustic shadow, uh, when apex too deep in far field, so uh, our major concern in getting good uh, LV image is, uh, is that they are not uh, for shortened or trunc truncate. Uh, to avoid that, we can increase our depth and focus on the middle of LV. And we ha have some troubles too in lateral wall because it's par parallel to the ultrasound beam and we know that's not good for a high quality image acquisition. <laughs> the most used views for that are uh, tra transgas short axis at different levels, the transgastric long axis, and the mid esophageals for chamber to chamber and long axis views. The first thing to do is uh, eyeball the heart. It's a very quick uh, method, and it takes about 10 seconds, and give us a subjective analysis of global function first thing to do is observe if the walls are getting thicker or not, and in the uh, short axis, if they, they are coming to a central point. In uh, longi uh, mid esophageal longitudinal views, we can see there is longitudinal movement if they, the base come down and apex come, come up. And, of course, in, in, a, in a few mi minutes, we can see that this heart is not beating so well, probably uh, a moderate dysfunction. In this other exam, uh, there are almost no uh, myocardial thickening, almost uh, non longitudinal movement, as you can see. And uh, that's a uh, severe dysf uh, dysfunction heart. And on the other hand, uh, in this example, we, we have a good longitudinal movement. Uh, walls are getting thicker. And uh, there is a, a central uh, moving uh, to LV walls. And that corresponds to a normal uh, systolic function. Perception of uh, LV wall movements are so much, much easier in uh, 3D echo reconstructions, uh, and that's why this method is so more sensitive. Now the next step is to perform a regional analysis differentiating each segment. It can be done only by multiple views, and uh, classificating these segments uh, sometimes can be a little bit confusing because uh, there are uh, different segmentation models, 16, 17, 18 segment models, and they are different in the way they start counting the segment too. But in uh, 2015, ASA and the European Association of uh, Cardiovascular Imaging published an, up an update of their recommendation for cardiac chamber quantification, and they suggest the use of the 17 segment model starting counting that by the basal anterior wall. And to assess this wall motion, a four-grade 
should be applied to, to each segment, one to four, corresponding to normal, hypokinetic, dyskinetic, uh, akinetic, and dyskinetic. Uh, in early uh, classification, there was the number five, two uh, aneurysms, but uh, it is no longer used. Uh, aneurysms can be either akinetic or dyskinetic, and that, that's what counts for LV systolic function. Now, to perform uh, the regional analysis, I like to focus uh, my attention on uh, the wall we uh, want to study. We can uh, zoom it, or we can uh, simple, uh, just with a piece of paper, cover the rest of the heart and get focus on our image. Um, this stop, but uh, you may have noticed that uh, the mid uh, anterior septum wall uh, are not getting thicker and they are not moving so much, and we confirm that uh, by uh, the, uh, the short axis view. So now it's time to quantificate LV systolic function, and there is so many ways to do that. The most popular ones are measuring. Uh, dimensions, areas, and volumes, like uh, fractional area change, ejection fraction, that give us a good idea of global function. We can also assess hemodynamics of this patient, calculate cardiac output, the PDT when we have some degree of mitral regurgitation. And a good way also is uh, study the mechanics of these walls by wall motion and thickening, my, uh, myocardial velocity, myocardial deformation, and timing this measurement. And that's important that uh, not give us only the global idea, but perform a regional analysis too. And the best technologies to that are tissue Doppler speckle tracking and 3D echo. When we talk about measuring something in LV, the gold standard to that is MRI and when we search uh, comparisons um, between different uh, echocardiographic modalities with uh, MRI, we may find that <coughs> linear measurements have too many bias, a very wide confidential interval, and the better uh, limits of agreement are with uh, 3D echo. And just to illustrate uh, to you why, linear measurements always have to make a geometric assumption of a prolate ellipsoid form that not always uh, be true, because there are a, a lot of pathologies that change the form of LV. Uh, so it's, uh, I'll fault is a quick and easy method, is the least accurate one. When we work with 2D, there's also a geometric assumption but uh, Simpson's method, uh, way of uh, assessment, makes it, it more reproducible and accurate. And when we work with uh, 3D echo, this uh, geometric assumption is only partial because computer does a direct voxel count. So since 2015, this uh, Linear measurements uh, in order to obtain LV volumes are no longer recommended for clinical use. But an option is to calculate fractional error chains. We can get it in transgas mid papillary short axis. We uh, just, uh, at the end, uh, diastolic frame, we just contour endocardial border, and by plan planimetry, we can get the, the area and repeat it in the own end systolic frame, okay? And its normal values are over than 35%, and get, we have a good correlation with severe dysfunction when these values are below 15%. And that's a very useful method to, to assess LV preload, because uh, each difference in uh, 0.3 square centimeters corresponds to 1% of our uh, patient blood uh, volume loss. So, fractional error is simple, is easy. 
takes about 45 seconds, correlates very well with ejection fraction and volumes, but is very dependent on loading conditions. And it's a uh, measurement in only one, one uh, plane at one level, so because that regional wall motion abnormalities uh, make a big difference when they are severe. <coughs> the best uh, way to uh, quantificate LV sys global systolic function is by calculating LV ejection fraction and volumes. Um, uh, ejection fraction should be always uh, be obtained in our exam, and we can get it by 3D echo or Simpsons biplane. The Simpsons uh, method uh, calculates LV volumes by a uh, summation of several uh, disks uh, set within uh, the maximal length of LV. And we perform it in four chamber view. At the end, uh, uh, just all frame, we, we just set the, the distance uh, of the mitral annulus and contour the endocardial border. We repeat that in uh, end systolic view, uh, view and end systolic frame in order to obtain the end uh, systolic volume, and uh, the same method in the uh, two chamber view. But uh, Simpson's method has its limitations too. First uh, of all, we must have a good endocardial border. Sometimes it's difficult uh, to fit disynchronic parts in the same frame. Uh, regional wall motion abnormalities are not fully accounted in this method because remember, uh, postural, lateral, and an anterior septal walls are, cannot be seen either in four chamber or two chambers views, and it's a bit-to-bit -bit variation method. So when we have an arrhythmia, we must perform several measurements in order to obtain a reliable average. LV volumes. Uh, depending on patient sex and patient size, because that is recommended when we report them. Uh, they uh, should be indexed to uh, body surface area. Of, uh, on the other hand, LV ejection fraction are not dependent on patient size, but depends on patient sex, and normal volumes are considered over 52% uh, for men and over 54% for women. 3D echo. 3D echo has better accuracy and precision, uh, but some troubles may happen when we face some very large ventricles when they are over than uh, 195 milliliters start having a very wide confidential interval. Uh, but this method still has the lower intra and inter observer variability. It demands more time, but uh, perform, performs an automatic uh, regional analysis that is uh, much more sensitive than our um, subjective classification of the segments. Yeah. Full uh, vo volumes um, images are acquired within four bits, uh, but before we uh, acquire these images, well, we must uh, have a good 2D images, and it's advisable to, to perform a 3D life echo uh, to ensure that uh, LV is not for, uh, foreshortened or uh, truncated. Calculation um, ejection fraction by 3D is a semi-automatic method. We just uh, set uh, the planes. Uh, at the mitral annulus, we set what's uh, septal, what's lateral, what's anterior, what's uh, inferior, the apical point, and uh, orientate uh, our error to the center of uh, uh, IVS. And computer gave us this uh, 3D reconstruction model that we can analyze it globally or uh, region by region. Um, in our first ex 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 uh, example of a uh, winning bypass of uh, after a aortic valve replacement, we can uh, get these uh, tomographic views very similar to MRI, and uh, we can uh, clearly see a moderate dysfunction with uh, an ejection fraction of 35%. 
we can study it too by uh, graphically by uh, volume over time curves, by uh, the synchrony index, and uh, uh, finally getting this uh, very useful parametric viewing of uh, timing and excursion. Uh, note these uh, flat lines here. They correspond to uh, severe hypokinetic and akinetic uh, parts of the heart. Uh, show it in dark blue and black color here. And uh, we may notice that in the mid uh, anterior septum wall uh, is akinetic. In this other example, uh, we can see that this segment and this other one are getting bigger instead of getting smaller. Um, and that's uh, due uh, to uh, the, the skinny parts uh, due to uh, myocarditis. The last, last example is an hyperkinetic heart with a very good ejection fraction and almost normal parametric view. And now it's time to study uh, mechanics of these walls. And to that, first we must uh, remember the concepts of strain and strain rate in a deformable system. Strain is just the, the difference uh, between length in my myocardial fiber uh, when uh, uh, contraction is occurring and uh, strain rate is the rate that occurs, is the difference uh, between velocity, velocities within different points in myocardial fiber. And just remember, they are negative in longitudinal and circumferential ways and positive in radial direction. The two uh, most used technologies to assess strain and strain rate are TDI, tissue Doppler, and um, uh, speckle tracking. TDI works primarily with uh, tissue velocities and speckle tracking with uh, displacement. And, and in both methodologies we, we can uh, obtain strain and strain rate. Speckle tracking is just an autom automatic analysis of the displacement of uh, specific acoustic markers in myocardium from frame to frame and it's possible to uh, obtain global systole uh, longitudinal strain that's the most used uh, strain pattern. Uh, we just speckle tracking the mid esophageal uh, long axis view. Start with this, uh, this view because uh, in this view we can set the aortic valve closure time that's so important to us and then the four chamber view and two chamber view. Normal va values uh, uh, are different between different vendors and different software versions, but as a uh, general guidance, they, uh, the normal values can be considered about 20%, minus 20% negative. So let's uh, see the, this example of a, a moderate dysfunction heart with a 40% uh, ejection fraction, but uh, a very large ventricle with uh, a decreased uh, GLS. So uh, ejection fraction gives us uh, a, the idea of pump function, and GLS gives us the idea of contractility. Stroke volume and ejection fraction have too many uh, compensating mechanisms. So uh, it can be normal uh, even if uh, we face a decreased contractility. Remember our aortic valve replacement guy? He has uh, de uh, decreased uh, GLS2 and see how uh, it is easy to uh, see that uh, regional wall motion abnormality of mid uh, interceptal wall, just coloring the, the speckle tracking, and see uh, a positive strain in this uh, parametric viewing. We can also observe another thing. The earlier contraction, 
contraction of uh, septum with late contraction almost uh, in the IVC of uh, the lateral wall. That's uh, probably due to some uh, uh, to some uh, left uh, branch, uh, left bundle branch block. All these due to CBP. And um, not only absolute uh, values of strain are important, because um, hypokinetic parts can reach uh, maximum deformation to as the normal. Um, the, the normal segments, but they do it in a delayed way. So, when we face tardokinesis, that's um, when uh, deformation occurs, 20% uh, uh, of deformation occurs after our valve closure, that's a positive sign of inhomogeneity of uh, this segment, and uh, it's a, a early sign of uh, uh, hypokinesis. And the last technology I want to show you is uh, tissue Doppler image. It focuses on the uh, lower velocity and uh, high amplitude signals uh, from myocardium. It has some, uh, some ad, um, it has some angle dependence and they not di differentiate uh, contraction from bullet segment. That's, that's why uh, speckle tracking is a little bit more suitable. But it's a good method to assess global function too. We can uh, do that by calculating the peak micro analyst descending uh, velocity. When these values are over than uh, 5.4, they are very well correlated with ejection fraction over 50% with very high sensitivity and uh, specificity. And we can uh, even increase this specificity and uh, sensitivity when we average uh, the lateral, the septal, the anterior, and the, and the fewer uh, points of uh, mutual analysis. So I would like to thank for the invitation, uh, for the, your attention, and uh, I'm here to any questions that you may want to ask.